In the previous video, we have seen how can we create a portal. We also have seen some other hints on how, for example, to see which widgets are rendering the page. And of course, how can we see which pages we are right now by using the URL and the ID in there. And in today's video, we are going to see how can we create pages and how can we add widgets to those pages. We are also going to see which tool is the best, for example, page designer or page editor. So let's get started. As we have our backend here, in the first video, we got to know the portals module from the service portal. And in today's video, we are going to talk about pages. And if we need to rank a top three modules from this application here, we are going to say portals, pages, and widgets. So let's go by pages. And here we have all the pages, all the IDs that we can access via all the portals. So let's navigate in these pages here, for example. Let's go to the service portal and let's just request something on the SC category. And we are in the service portal. And if I change to the IT, I will also be redirected to this portal, but with the same page. What means here is that we can have multiple portals using the same page. When we are speaking about creating pages, there are many ways of doing this. The first one would be you have one out of the box page, for example, SC category, which we were, and you can use the clone page. When you clone the page, this page is going to use all the widgets and the structure that the original one has. And with structure, what we mean here is basically what is going to happen with the layout of the page, of the CSS, like having a row, a column and everything, which also helps on the responsiveness of the page. In this case here, we want to clone this page. In this specific example, we're going to create one copy of this by saying that this is the ITSM category. And we're going to name it as ITSM SC category, only as a matter of an example. With that, when I save, now I have my page named like this and looks exactly like what we had. So this is the first way. The second way is, of course, if you go to pages and then you click on new, you have the flexibility to say what is the title, your ID, exactly as we did previously when we cloned, but then you have an empty page content. So you don't have any structure in anything like this. And we can also do by saying ITSM page one, and we are going to do ITSM page one. And if we save, and if we navigate now, to this page, it will appear empty with only our menu because the menu is in the whole portal. It's everywhere. It's not in only one page. So you don't have to add this menu to all the pages because it's there. You also have the possibility to create a page on the page designer whenever you click here and you simply go to the landing page of the page designer. Then whenever you are here, you can select a page that you want to modify or you can simply click on add a new page. With that, it's the same thing as we did in the backend. We can define a title and a page ID, and then we're going to have the same page. So let's say ITSM number three, this is going to be automatically populated with there, and then you have an empty page like this. So now that I have my page created, I need to add content to it. The easiest way is by using the designer the page designer. So you have a related link called open in designer when you are in the page and when you click on this, your page will open. And this will open with a container already in place in which here, as you see, you have the layouts, the CSS layouts, or better saying the grid system of the bootstrap. So with the layout of the bootstrap, you can simply drag and drop the layout which you wish to have. For example, if you like to have a, a 12 column in here, then it will be and it will load the whole page, the whole extension of the page, or better saying the width of the page. Let's start with one example, which widget we could add. We could add the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs is in almost all of the pages and just tells the, the user 
about the navigation where the user is, so it's to simply help the end user. But let's say we want to add a new layout as well, and we're going to build here this here, and we're going to add also a breadcrumb because I want to compare how both looks like in different layouts. And now I will add the type I had search, which the user will be able to search for something inside of the platform in this portal. So if I refresh the page, now I see that I have two different breadcrumbs, one that is occupying 12 and here occupying nine and three. With that, I can say that the page designer is very useful for me to create and construct the layout of my page by saying which widgets are going to load where. Of course, I can also do more stuff and you have this pencil in here by all the widgets. And if you click on those pencils, you usually have opened the widget options. There is also one important thing that I mentioned previously that is regarding another tool called page editor. If I click in there, I will see my page in this disposition here. So it's more concentrated on how the structure looks like. For example, I have one container row and I can directly see without scrolling everything that the page contains. And I can directly see how many containers, rows, columns, as well as the end. So the last thing at to the right is going to be your instances of your widgets. And whenever you click on the widget itself, of course you have access to the whole widget data. One very important use case here is regarding this page specific CSS part. Sometimes the customer might want to have something like a hover color changed in one out of the box widget itself. Sometimes you don't have to clone the widget to do that. You can simply identify which is the CSS selector on the widget and you can simply define here. For example, let's say you want the background color of this widget here, the breadcrumbs for this specific class, nav, nav pills, to be red as a background color. So we have identified that this here is the CSS selector and we can simply define here which is the background color we want for the page to appear. So whenever the page will identify this as the class, it's going to change the background color to red. And I'm going to say that this is important. So override this everywhere this is defined. So if I save, I can simply refresh the page and now I have the both widgets with this background color as red. Takeaways from here. I didn't need to clone the widget to do those changes on the CSS part. I have defined everything on the page specific CSS of the page. As a wrap up, we could see that we can simply copy a page by using the clone page UI action. We have seen the differences and advantages between page designer and page editor, as well as how can we add widgets to our pages by simply dragging and dropping widgets by using the page designer.